Hello, welcome to the Comic Book Commentary. I'm Bo Leidig, and this week's video is going to be slightly different because what we have in front of us today is not technically a comic book, but a preview to a comic book. Let me show you what I mean. We'll zoom in and take a closer look. So the book we see in front of us today is a preview to Shrapnel Number 1, which came out in January of 2009. Shrapnel was published by Radical Publishing, which would later go on to become Radical Studios. Radical had a unique way of producing comics in that every comic they produced had the intention of potentially becoming a movie at some point. So all of their books were published only in miniseries format. So there'd only be, you know, anywhere from three to six issues printed at a time. And each story arc was self-contained, which makes sense in terms of creating films and potential film franchises, but can be a little awkward in holding an audience because you kind of need those monthly sales, generally speaking, to keep driving interest in the book. We can see here on the left-hand side that we get a very short explanation of the basics of the Shrapnel storyline. Uh, Shrapnel starts out taking place on Venus and follows a war between the colonists and the Marine Force. Uh, it also takes place in later issues on the Jovian moons, Mars, and Earth itself. However, none of those things happen in this book in particular, and I'm not entirely sure what the setting of this book is supposed to be, since this book has literally no dialogue whatsoever. It is just illustrations front to back, which isn't terrible because, as you can see, Shrapnel has a very high quality of artwork, and... It's one of the things that drew me to this comic when I first bought the, I believe, might have been the trade paper to it back in 2009 or 2010. I'm not certain. And um, it has a style that I find reminiscent to that of Ashley Wood. Uh, not, not a particular copycat of his style per se, but it very much reminds me of his tone of artwork. And it's it really kind of helps draw into the perceived realism of Shrapnel, as Shrapnel, like all of Radical's comic books, don't it doesn't focus on superheroes. And this was an overarching theme that Radical started with and kept with for as long as they made comic books, which was only for about four years, and I thought it was a really cool idea at the time. It was neat to see that there was a company who was like, we're going to get away from the superhero norm and make stories about science fiction or crime drama or, you know, murder mysteries, that kind of thing. It was a unique take on what comic books could be. So here on the left page, we can see what looks to be the early stages of a battle. We have a mech suit. We have soldiers wearing some sort of exo gear. We have shots being fired. On the next page, we have what I believe is a drop ship and a mining operation of some kind, which I believe, if I remember correctly, is the basis of the Venusian economy. Uh, I do have all the issues of this book, and we will get into them at some point or another. Uh, as I stated, the idea behind these books was that they were supposed to be turned into movies. Uh, from what I've read, Hilary Swank was originally supposed to star as the main character in the Shrapnel movie. But as I'm recording this video in 2022... That movie has never happened, though if it does, I'd be excited and I would definitely watch it. Uh, that being said, Radical has made four movies to date. Uh, Oblivion, which starred Tom Cruise. Hercules, which some of you may or may not remember, that starred The Rock. Uh, it was an earlier point in his career where he was still making smaller budget movies. Uh, 
also Abiter, which I don't recall that movie at all. And after looking it up, I didn't recognize anyone who starred in it. And The Last Days of American Crime, which starred Edgar Ramirez, who some of you may remember, if you've ever seen the movie Bright, starring Will Smith, Edgar Ramirez played the elf in that movie who was on the police force and a detective. His name was Candemore, I believe. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's a made-up name. At any rate, he has been in a lot of things, but most of them I don't really recognize. And I believe a lot of his career has been in Spanish language media. So if you're someone who speaks Spanish, you may have seen a lot of his works. So here on the next page, we can see the people of Venus, I believe, gearing up to defend their colony against the invading force. Uh, we have two people of Venus who look to be uncertain of the battle ahead. Uh, again, if I remember correctly, the people of Venus are mostly just miners. They're not really uh, a military force. Uh, they're being invaded here by the Marines who are pouring out of a drop ship, opening fire on the colonists. Uh, down here, I believe this is either a heads-up display in one of the exosuits, or perhaps it's the targeting computer of one of the mech suits. There's a lot of guesswork involved in this, and I do apologize. It's difficult to find, figure out exactly what's going on when there's no dialogue to help direct you as to what any of the plot points are. On the next page here, we can see that the battle's intensifying. There's heavy fire coming from both sides. The Marines are targeting the colonists, one of them getting their brains blown out here in infrared. Uh, the colonists are then returning fire but the Marines seem to be overwhelming them. We get a really cool shot right here of one of the Marines' mech suits, which seems to be an artillery, but it's also, if you notice right here, ripping another guy in half. Uh, as we can see as we move down, we have a lot of fire coming from the Marines who seem to be much more well-organized and much better at fighting on a battlefield than the colonists, which of course they would be. So on the next page, we can see what looks to be the colonists getting completely overwhelmed by what I can only assume is a far superior military force. Uh, they're doing their best to hold on, but the outlook for the battle is starting to turn grim for them as the Marines seem to be getting more reinforcements, more dropships, more mech suits, and it doesn't seem like the battle is going to go in the favor of the colonists at all. So here on the next page, we get this fantastic two-page spread of just absolute chaos on the battlefield. Explosions, gunfire, people dying, just absolute chaotic kinetic warfare. And it's a fantastic illustration. Um, I will say, for as much as I like the artwork of Shrapnel... At times, it can be a little bit difficult to follow, depending on the way that the panels are laid out. I do remember that being one of the very few criticisms I had about this book. Uh, but overall, it, it's something that can be overlooked. It, it, it really... I can't state enough how much I enjoy a book with this type of artwork, with this level of quality behind it. So here on the final page, we have, I'm honestly not certain if that's the colonists or the space marines, firing shoulder-mounted missiles into the battle. It's causing a massive explosion, tons of casualties on the battlefield, and that's the end. We, of course, don't get any sort of conflict resolution in this book, as it's just a preview and not in any way supposed to be a final product of the story. And then on the inside reverse cover, we get credits. Uh, some of them are artists. Some of them are publishers. I'm not going to go through all the names. I'm going to be quite honest with you. Many of these names, I'm not certain that I can pronounce even remotely close to correctly. But I do applaud everyone involved because, as I stated before, Shrapnel is a comic that I really like, and I'm really happy with where 
they took this book and what their ideas behind it were. And that concludes our look at Shrapnel Preview Comic. I am disappointed that Radical no longer publishes books. While the possibility of them publishing a comic again does exist for as long as Radical Studios continues to exist, it does appear that they have essentially quit publishing comic books and are focused entirely on making movies. And I understand it. The movie side of their business has made them considerably more money than the comic book side ever has. Uh, As far as I could find, none of their movies have ever failed to turn a profit. Uh, Oblivion, you know, for that being their first movie and them to land Tom Cruise in the starring role. And also Morgan Freeman was in that movie. Uh, I forgot to mention that earlier. And then their follow-up film, Hercules, to have The Rock in the starring role. Now, granted, he is easily the most recognizable actor in that movie. A lot of the other characters are played by actors that I didn't recognize. But still, these were big successes. And while their second movie did well, their third and fourth didn't do quite as well. uh, But they didn't spend a ton of money to make those movies. Uh, The Last Days of American Crime, starring Edgar Ramirez, was originally supposed to star Sam Worthington, who you will probably remember from his starring roles in Avatar and Terminator Salvation, which both came out in 2009. Those two movies were probably the height of Sam Worthington's career. He's never really made a movie that was was as successful as those two. And... You know, despite those movies being successful, I don't really think either one of them are all that great. I mean, Terminator Salvation was kind of the beginning of the downfall of the Terminator franchise. And I don't care what anybody says, Avatar is really nothing more than James Cameron's shameless attempt to make a retelling, reimagining, live-action version of Fern Gully The Last Rainforest. That's my opinion. I'm sticking by it fight me. Uh, If you liked today's video, please like, comment, subscribe. If you didn't like it, thanks for stopping by anyway. I appreciate the look. And uh, I just hope everyone has a great day.